Aleluias. Gostaria de cumprimentar a igreja. I'd like to greet the church and those, those who visit us with the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite those who can to open the word of the Lord in the book of Revelations. Revelations 4. We're going to read only the two first verses. The book of Revelations. Revelations 4. to read from verse 1. Thus says the word of the Lord. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here. And I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne sat in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Let's be the name of the Lord. Beloved Father, we praise you. We want to give you praises, because once again we are in your presence. After uh, a day full of tribulation, and difficulties, we come here or we can rest under your hands. We praise you for the, the songs that we sang and we praise you for the, your presence. And now we ask that your word may speak to each heart and that you may bless each life here present, those who are watching us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. My brother, we read a text that speaks a, a, about yet another experience that John had in the presence of the Lord. As we know, John writes the book of Revelations, where everything was revealed, where the Lord manifests in a mighty way. But what is interesting is, as the text began saying, after those things, what things are, are these that we can see? We can see that in the first three chapters, Jesus introduces himself to John, no longer as a, carp a carpenter, not like a man with uh, dirty feet because of the dust, with an untidy hair. No, Jesus presents to John as the glorified Jesus, as a powerful Jesus, Jesus had overcome death and was now alive at that moment. And there Jesus begins to reveal himself to John. And says, John, write those letters. And we see that from chapter 2, John begins to write letters to the church, to the cities, in which he speaks of, about a prophetic moment, he speaks about a historical moment, and yeah, the first experience that John had, we don't know exactly how long it took from that moment, from that first experience, until this moment right now, uh, that we, the moment in which we, re we just read. It was in the Isle of Patmos, because he had testified that Jesus was alive, he was taken prisoner, and Patmos for John represented many things. None of them were good. Patmos for John was represented pain, solitude. John, most likely, he was beaten up. John saw the time passing by and his physical body deteriorating and he had no hope, humanly speaking. John knew that that place was he was just just waiting for death to arrive. But the word of the Lord for John was the following. Look to, to the heavens. 
And after these things, I looked. And where did he look? He looked to heaven. My brethren, we come to the house of the Lord tonight. And we live in a world that is our patterns. Everyone has their own situation. Every person has the difficulty that they go through in their daily lives. Patterns for us represent solitude and sadness, pain. This world for us, this world has nothing to offer to us. We work, we fight, and at the end of the day, what we receive as a reward is a tired body and it's a head filled with problems. But tonight, the God of John, and Jesus that spoke to John, he speaks to us tonight and he says, look to heaven. I don't know how long it took from your experience with the Lord, because John here, he says, I heard a voice, like the voice that spoke with me all the way back, they spoke with the sound of the trumpet, it was a unique voice. The trumpet has a unique sound. We do not sound very many notes in the trumpet, it's just a unique sound. The voice of the Lord, you cannot, be, you cannot get, get confused with it. John did not get confused. Time passed by, many problems came upon his life, but as soon as he heard the voice of the Lord, he said, Wait a minute, I recognize this voice. It is the voice that spoke with me when I was still sewing my fishing net. When I was patching up my fishing net, when I was trying to fish with my relatives and my friends, I was not able to catch anything. And then a man that came to us, that people used to refer to us as the man from Nazareth, the son of a carpenter, and that man came to John and said the following, came, come, and through that voice they spoke with John, all the way back there, three years before there, more or less, it was the same voice that spoke to John, come up here, my brother changed, John changed his outlook, until that point, John was only looking around, around his, his, his life, his situation, the Patmos Island. But from that moment forward, John took another stand. I believe that John in that island, he may have even planned, I'm going to prepare this place here, so that when I die, I, I would like to be near here, because so when I'm close to death, he even probably thought about his burial, his burial place. All of this John was already prepared because he was only he in the island. As I said, he had no, uh, has no outlook on his life. But from that moment forward, John no longer planned his life towards death. For everything that would take place in that island. John is transported to heaven. My brethren, the Lord tonight wants to bring us closer to Him. He wants to bring us to, to near Him so that He can show us mighty things. That's why He said to John, and the great joy of John is our joy. The mystery of John is this. It says the following on verse 2. Immediately I was, I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven. And then the, assur the assurance of John that the sound, of, the voice of the trumpet, the one that he spoke to him, was the same one that was here, because the word says that in the throne there was one that was sitting down. And the word uh, tells us that only one is worthy to sit on the throne, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that for John was the assurance of the following. He looks up and he sees that the Jesus has suffered so much beside him that died a death of cross, had defeated death, he had left the body that deteriorated, and now a glorified Jesus with our eyes of uh, flames and with a hair of wool, 
that Jesus calls him, asking, come. And Jesus is telling to us tonight, come. I'm not giving this word because of death. It's not because of this. Paul refers to death in a different way. We read a text last Sunday in 1 Thessalonians that says that I don't want to be ignorant about the ones who sleep. You know why, my brother? Because for the world, death is the end of everything. But for the servant of God, he's not dead, he's sleeping because it is a temporary state. Because when Jesus returns, the ones who have died on the Lord, all the ones, the servants of the Lord that was persecuted, servants of the first church, servants that suffered, suffered in the name of the Lord, they will be transformed. And we, if we are still alive, you will, we will also be transformed. And so this temporal state will pass. My brethren, the Lord tonight has for us one thing. Don't look to Patmos Island. Don't look this, to this life. Uh, it is easy to say it, but it's hard to, to do it. It's very hard. We're, let's not be a hypocrite in saying that. But what the Lord has for us is much greater than what this, this world has to offer. This world has sadness. The joy of the Lord is greater. The world has pain. Jesus has a peace that is much greater. The, this world has insecurity, but the Lord Jesus has a, a security that is much greater. My brother, tonight, the Lord is making an invitation. Come up here. Leave the island Patmos behind. What is bothering you tonight? Is it school? Is it your friends at school? Maybe at work? Maybe your health? Your family? The situation you are going through, and your financial situation, what afflicts you, what takes your sleep away many times at night, is it what is bothering you in your life? I don't know. Every, each person has their own island, patterns of island, island of patterns. But the, the God of John is, is the same uh, God that we have and calls us not to look to patterns, but to look up because our help does not come from patterns. Our help does not come from the wife, the husband, the friend, or, or the son. No. Our help comes from the Lord that created heaven and earth is the Lord that sustains us, the, the Lord that blesses us, the Lord that if you are here tonight, it is because the Lord brought you here tonight. It is not because I need to go, not at all. You may even think like that. But who brought you here was the Lord, and I'm sure of this. My brethren, we're bringing this message to a close, but look up, look to heaven, because the Lord says the following. Come up here, and I will show you, and I will show you things which must take place after this. And the promise of the Lord is the following. John has had gone through many amazing experiences. He saw Jesus glorified. Jesus spoke to him about the letters, as we already studied about. But the promise of the Lord is the following. Come up here, because I'm going to show you. Things are even greater than the ones that he already experienced. And this promise is also for us. The experience that you went through in the first moment of your spiritual life, now the Lord is inviting you. Come up here. We have come to this place. We come to the presence of the Lord. And the desire of the Lord is to show to us things that are greater, to give us greater experience than the ones we had. We just need to look up take a, a different stand. If we look down, our head weighs down, our back hurts, our, our legs get tired. But when, when we look up, everything changes. Even our expression is if like our chest went up, our, our, we are erect, our backs are okay, uh, we no longer have uh, physical problems, and we look to our Redeemer, the one who blesses us, the one that one day will take us to heaven, to eternity. Amen. Let's glorify the Lord with the song.
Glória a Jesus. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. My brethren, the Lord was showing also, as we were praying for the service, two spiritual gifts and, and one vision in which the Lord is speaking about a man that is uh, walking, crouched with a physical problem. He walks crouched because he only looks downwards. And because of this situation, he gets tired very quickly. And everything that he did, and everything that this man does, is related to the ground. His house was built downwards. The construction was made, built downwards. It's like a, it's like a, a basement. And it is interesting that as he was building, it was uh, already lower in level, he heard a voice. This voice would say, enough, that's it. And he would understand as he heard this voice, he would understand that that was geared towards him. And from that moment forward, he would take an, a different stand. He would no longer look back downwards. He would straighten up and would begin to look up. And as he looked up, everything that he had planned for his life that was related to the ground, that was related to looking down, he has, does a 180 degree turnaround. And he was no longer looking downwards. When he was looking up, his construction was began, would begin to go up. And my brethren, the world, has a weight, and the weight of this world is, is great. Many times we, we look down because of sin, because the things of this world, they have, they have a weight. And the tendency is, is like this. You begin to look downwards, and you crouch, and the back hurts, and the neck hurts, and the head hurts. My brethren, the Lord has not called you, especially you, my, my brother who entered here tonight to be defeated. The Lord called you to be victorious. The trials, they will continue to happen. They will not stop. But the difference is that the Lord is saying the following, take my yoke, which is soft. The Lord establishes a partnership with us. He takes upon him our sins, the weight that we carry, and He places upon us His love, His peace, His refreshing. It is a par partnership that is unfair, but it's just to show you how God loves us. And the Lord also shown there is a man that has gone through a moment of great suffering. And the Lord is telling him, look, I want to give strength to your hands take you out of this life of um, discomfort. The suffering that this man is going through is the, is the result of sin, because sin causes us to be ashamed. Adam did that. He was hiding. And we are like that. And this life of um, tripping and falling down is like this. The Lord, Lord Jesus says, I'm going to strengthen your knees. It's going to be painful. Yes, it will be. Nobody said that it was going to be easy. Not even Jesus said it was going to be easy. But the promise of the Lord has already been decreed that because we do not fight for the victory, we fight with the victory beside us. Our assurance is that the Lord says it's going to be painful. It will be. But I will give you the victory, my brother and my brethren. Let's change our, the way we act with the things around us. Sometimes the world imposes things to us, and but the Lord doesn't want us to look downwards. We need to look up. The doors of heaven, the heaven are open. When John looked up, he saw that the gates of heaven were open. Jesus is on the throne. Let us look to Jesus. Amen. Let us have a word of praise to the Lord.
We ask that you continue with us, teaching us, Lord. Because you, you are our redemption. You are the one who help us to walk in uh, the straight path, Lord. We glorify you for this night, for this wonderful message. Help us more and more to remain on your presence. We praise in the name of Jesus. Invite the brand to stand up. Let's pray, bring this service to a close. And soon after the prayer, we're going to give a, uh, an apostolical blessing. If you still need a greater understanding of the word or the explanation, even assistance in the prayer, we are making ourselves available to you to help in whatever you need, whatever is possible. Receive, Lord, our adoration, our service offered to you, Lord. Each prayer that was said, every intercession, every plea, the glorifications, everything, Lord, is to exalt only your name. And we ask that your word may remain in our hearts and that we may generate in us faith, salvation, generate, Lord, a change, complete change in our lives. Continue, continue causing us to always be in your presence and that we may never look behind but that we may always be trusting on you the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit we pour out upon all of us now and forevermore Amen the church may be seated. We should be praying for the seminar, for those who are going to travel, as a few by bus, cars, and some by plane, so that everything may happen uh, accordingly to the will of God, so that there is no nothing that may hinder us, any of us, from being there in that place, and to all the peace of the Lord.